So it's been pretty well documented that a higher pH will lead to a higher calcification in corals and thus higher growth. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about what I have done to raise pH in my tanks and also some other possible options out there that I haven't tried. So let's get to it. Okay, one reason why you may have elevated CO2 levels in a house is that you have a very well sealed house and, and really good high quality windows. Now what is high CO2 in a house? Well, I think pretty much anything over 1,000 parts per million would be considered to be high in terms of CO2 levels. Anything over 2,000 to 2,500 parts per million would be considered potentially unhealthy. So I think my advice would be to invest in a cheap CO2 meter to see exactly what you have in your house. But yeah, I think that's step number one is to kind of assess what you have in terms of the CO2 levels in a house. So in general, if you're using a calcium reactor versus using two-part calcium and alkalinity supplementation, then with that calcium reactor, you're gonna have lower pH since you are injecting CO2. Now there's a couple things you can do when you're using a calcium reactor to try to reduce the CO2 levels. One is I have a dual chamber calcium reactor and that second chamber helps to absorb the excess CO2. What I also use is a Kalkwasser reactor and that Kalkwasser will help raise the pH. For my established 187 gallon tank, I do run the two part. And the pH range in the past has been fine. It's been in the 8.0 to 8.3 range, averaging around 8.1. So that's not terrible at all. What I have tried in the past to raise the pH on this tank is I have run a airline tubing from the skimmer intake. And this is actually the, uh, the tubing right here that I had set up and ran it up against the wall along the ceiling here and you can see the uh, the end of the hose is right here but I had tried running it through this utility window to try to bring fresh air into the skimmer because I I read and heard that that was a way to increase pH but it didn't really work for me I didn't see that elevation in pH so I don't know if it had to do with the size of the air intake hose or whether I just was not getting enough fresh air in. But, I, you know, the issue for me was here in the winter time, just even cracking that win window open a little bit, like a quarter of an inch, whatever, a half an inch, <laughs> does let a lot of cold air into the basement. So I didn't really see that as a long-term solution, but I did want to try it out. Other things that you can do that I have not tried is use a CO2 scrubber, and again, the CO2 scrubber hooks into the air intake on the protein skimmer, and you've got CO2 absorbing media. So that's a way to raise the pH by removing the excess CO2. Another thing you can use are pH additives, but the problem with those pH additives is that they also raise alkalinity. So another thing to consider is the amount of surface agitation that you have on your tank. I like to have a lot of flow in my tanks and thus I do like to have a lot of surface agitation because I believe strong circulation is very important for SPS. But if you do have that strong surface agitation and you do have high levels of CO2 in your room, then due to the gas air exchange, you will have more CO2 absorbed into the tank. One other thing I wanted to mention, and I've heard this can help, is if you have a lot of plants in the room, which I don't have any plants down here, but plants will absorb CO2. So I have heard that if you have a bunch of plants, that could be a good way to absorb the CO2 and increase the pH of the tank. Okay, getting back to the new system in which I'm running the calcium reactor as well as a caulkwasser. I was concerned even though I'm running a dual chamber calcium reactor as well as a caulkwasser, that the pH would be a lot lower on this system versus my established system in which I'm running the two part. Plus the fact that I'm in Vermont, the windows are shut very tightly in the winter time. 
obviously if you can open up the windows and let fresh air in that's going to be a big plus in terms of raising the ph and lowering the amount of co2 that's trapped inside of the house but for me i really wanted to have a more permanent solution in the winter time where i could have some good circulation from the outside air inside to help reduce that co2 so this is what i came up with i invested in one of these this is a air exchange unit or like an hvac unit which essentially brings fresh air from the outside via these ducts to the inside and i'm gonna give you a quick tour of this air exchange unit okay so now i am outside the house it's the middle of march and as you can see we still have snow on the ground it's a chilly morning here but the sun is shining and it's actually supposed to get in the 60s today Woo! anyway all right what you're looking at here is the back of the house with a couple of vents and this vent here this is the intake so that's bringing fresh air from the outside into the house and this is the exhaust this is taking the air from the outside of the house and expelling it outside so now we'll go inside the air exchange unit is set up into two different zones one zone is the room where I have the two display tanks in and there are two different vents so I'm walking over here and this is the door that will separate the two different zones the fish tank room or the sump room is is a whole separate zone but this vent right here for this particular zone is the intake and then the ductwork is behind the wall obviously and this is the exhaust so this is <clears throat> bringing the uh, the fresh air from the outside into this room and that vent over there is sucking out the highly concentrated heavy laden co2 air i guess you can say <laughs> and in the sump room this is the intake bringing in the air sucking the air out of the room and around the corner here that's the exhaust so that's pushing the fresh air back in so that's recirculating in this room and again here's all the duct work but overall I'm very very pleased compared to a year ago and I've been running this unit for a couple of months and like I mentioned for my established tank where I have the two part before I had the air exchange unit going my pH was in the 8.0 to 8.3 averaging about 8.1 but since I've been running this unit compared to the similar period a year ago my pH is now up to 8.2 to 8.4 on that tank averaging you know 8.3 and 0.2 is a big jump in pH because that's measured on a logarithmic scale so I'm really really happy about that for that uh, established 187 gallon tank and you know for for my new tank which I'm running the uh, the calcium reactor on and I'm not running that calcium reactor full bore right now because I barely have any corals in it but I'm seeing pH values that are going as high as 8.6 and as low as like 8.3 so I'm very optimistic that that's going to help elevate the pH in that tank which is uh, great since I am running a calcium reactor and that was the reason why I actually was running two part on my established tank from the get-go was because of my concern about the lower pH. Has the higher pH on this system resulted in better coral growth for me on this tank? Yes, absolutely. I've definitely, definitely noticed the increased growth in my SPS on this system. So very happy about that for sure. A couple of last points about this air exchange unit. This one is a commercial grade, industrial grade unit retails for about 1200 bucks you can actually get one that should be sufficient probably for half that price for a smaller area the other good
thing to note about these units is that it can hook into an HVAC system and help improve the air quality of the entire house. So that's a big plus if you're trying to convince the spouse or significant other about making that major investment in a unit like this. Well, that will do it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I'll put links to Marine Depot and Reef Bum in the video description below. See you next time.